So this video is for anyone whose wonderful sibling has bought them an AeroPress for Christmas. We're going to go through the foolproof method that I've used for a standard cup of coffee using the AeroPress, uh, which is a variation on James Hoffman's one. And check out his YouTube channel after you have watched this and you've liked it and commented below and subscribed, unless you're already subscribed, which I'm sure you are. But anyway, so first, I'm just going to go through the whole process and it should be pretty easy, although there's a few steps. It is pretty easy. So to get started, we're going to set up the AeroPress. So to do that, we're going to get this little piece, which is like the filter that sits at the bottom, and paper filter. There's a whole lot of debate about using metal or paper filters, but paper filters are, um, I mean, you can put them in the green bin or you can put them in compost it's really good for the environment it's nothing wrong with it um, and it does not change the flavor um, through blind tests just fix it to the bottom by attaching it and locking it in and then you're ready to go now i'm going to put it on top of the uh, the cup but it, i don't know why i'm doing that because i haven't even put any coffee in it how much coffee to put in so your aeropress comes with this little scoop and that scoop is good for a single dose of coffee now, coffee nerds will tell you that you need to use a weight and find out how many grams there is and then always put in the perfect amount of grams. I don't really care, you probably won't either, but if you do get coffee geeky, you can figure out how many grams of coffee you really like for a single dose. Now, using your grinder, which is not this one, uh, but or maybe it is, I don't know, um, you wanna make sure that you've got the setting right. Now, I'm only putting a single dose of coffee in. Uh, some people have their coffee grinders set up with heaps of coffee beans ready to go. I only do one because I'm not running a commercial kitchen. It's easy peasy. One dose, I'm done with my spoon. Okay, so how coarse do you want to get it? Ah. So I'm not sure if you can read this on here, but you can go you know, really, really coarse or really, really low. For a good AeroPress coffee, I find that you don't want it to be finest it can be. Because it, if it's really, really fine, that's like an espresso grade and you need a lot of pressure to get through. But you also want lots of surface area. So I usually take it to, this goes all the way from zero to 25. I put it on six because it's fairly fine, but it's not super fine. Okay, things are going to get a little bit noisy when I now grind the coffee. Now, if I wasn't doing this for demonstration, my water, my kettle would be boiling. Well, I'd, I'd be warming it up right now, but because... Um, it'll be hard to hear me if I did that for demonstration. I'm just going to do it separately But if you want to do this quick have your, your water boiling as well But I'll get back to the point about boiling in a tick. All right, let's grind You might want to tap it a bit just to get the last bit of coffee out. But there we go. That's a single dose of coffee. Smells delicious. Okay. Now that we've done that, the grinding is done. I'm going to move the grinder over here. And I'm going to start to get the water heated up. Now, the thing about warming up your water is you don't want it to be boiling. When you boil the water, that's going to be causing... A lot of very bitter notes to come out of your coffee ground and those bitter notes some people will refer to that as burning your beans it's not actually burning it um, but it's yuck so why would you do that um, I'm gonna heat mine up because I'm using dark roast beans and you're very likely using that as well if you don't know what it is it's probably dark roasted beans you can get light roasted more of an artisan type bean um, for that, you need to bring the temperature higher. So I find that around 80 to 81 degrees, and that's why I've got this little laser um, temperature probe, that's perfect for a dark roast. If it's light, take it up to about 88, even 90 degrees, that'll be fine. I've gone way over before with light roast, and it's just fine as well. Uh, but dark roast, you don't want it to be terribly hot, about 80 degrees. So, I might cut here, is it just... Okay. 
77 degrees. 77 degrees. Oh. Oh. 81. Oh. So it doesn't take a long time. Now, I'm going to change the angle a bit. You're going to come with me as we have a look. I'm going to be pouring it over the grounds, and when I do that, I want to make sure that all the grounds are going to be wet. Once I've filled up the amount of water that I want, which is actually just how much I want in my standard cup of long black coffee, I'm going to be putting the plunger on straight away. reason I'm doing that is so that it doesn't all sort of drip out whilst I'm waiting. Uh, also, if you don't have this thing on a cup, you're a fool. It's going to be dripping. Have it on a cup. Make sure that you don't create a mess. I've done it before. All right, let's have a look over the top. I'll go like this. Whoa. Okay, so I'm going to go over like that. And you'll see it's going all across the beans. Beautiful. Now I'm going to grab my plunger. You're going to see that I've got a little script there, which is now in shot. Um, there we go. All right. Now... This is sitting here. I filled it up to about that three mark. That's how much coffee I like in mine. Um, and then I put the plunger thing on there and I'm gonna let it rest. I'm gonna let it rest for three minutes, at least three minutes. Three minutes is gonna be enough time to let it brew, to get it lovely and tasty. Any less than that, you're not gonna extract really enough flavor out of it. Any more than that, um, it's wonderful. You can go, go for much longer. It's just gonna get cold and cold. So, you know, three minutes is usually a good amount. So we're going to come back once we hit three minutes. So it's already been one minute. Um, you don't have to be pedantic about it. Don't worry about setting a stopwatch unless you're really, really keen and you need to somehow, you know, police yourself. But anyway, we'll be back in a tick. Okay, I waited three minutes. I've been patient. Now I need to swirl the whole thing. Hold on to all of it, uh, and you can just swirl like this. The reason we're swirling, and you don't have to swirl for too long, is and you'll even see it. It's going to be hard on the camera, but you'll see that um, there's grounds which are just sitting on the top. And by swirling it, it just causes the grounds to go and, and sink through your brew. Um, once you've swirled it, you need to wait about 30 seconds um, and then you'll be ready to, to plunge and go. And actually, when you do it, lean in close and take a look because you can actually see them all sinking through. Um, so this is going to give you a long black but you can do a lot of variations. Put less water in, you've got yourself an espresso. Um, if you wanna do a latte, you can do an espresso shot and then maybe with a, a French press, you can put warm water in there and froth it up. And then without spending lots of money on a frother, you've got a, 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 a latte or a flat white or a cappuccino or, or whatever drink you'd really like. Um, what else can you do? Cold brew. Uh, do exactly the same process but with cold water and rather than waiting for three minutes wait for at least 30 minutes uh, preferably even overnight and you've got a really beautiful cold brew I don't like cold brew but you might so go for it okay we've now waited for 30 seconds now we're going to be just gently pushing enough so it just moves it should take about 30 seconds from the very top to push down to the very bottom um, and you'll know you push the bottom when you hear hissing and then just push right through that until there's no hissing left. The reason we push right through the hiss is so that we can extract all of the water that's sitting in the beans and it gives us a nice easy puck of coffee ground to throw out afterwards. Um, so it's hissing oh, and the hissing's just stopped. So what I also do is I just bring it back just a little bit and the reason for that is the pressure is off the coffee puck, so it's not going to be dripping everywhere when you, when you lift it off. I made that mistake many times. It doesn't mean it's not going to be dripping at all. When you lift it, it might be a bit of condensation, a little bit of last drop. There we go. And now that is a really delicious cup of coffee. Um, the really awesome thing about this is how clean it is. When you do decide to throw out the... Uh, coffee puck which you need to do immediately it just comes out clean see how clean that is now make sure you clean it straight away and then just rinse off um, all you're going to do is rinse it with some water and you can do a clean later that's the easy way to do an air press coffee i hope this video was short but this is the way to do it thanks